you are welcome once again to our series of lectures in inorganic chemistry. Today we want to discuss chemical bonding and we wish to make you recall that there are two types of change in chemistry. There are two types of change in chemistry. These are the physical change and the chemical change. You have the physical change and chemical change. For us to discuss chemical bonding, we shall concentrate on chemical change. In chemical change, new products which show remarkable variation in energy content between the product and the reactant are formed. For us to discuss chemical change, we must understand the basic features or the rudiments of an atom. We must understand the basic features of a given atom that is capable of engaging in chemical reaction. We must also be able to understand how atoms interact. How do atoms react? What determines how one atom reacts with another? And basically to why do atoms react? And if atoms react, what is or what are the product of such atomic interaction? We first of all start by asking ourselves, what is an atom? An atom, in the view of Dalton, a Manchester science teacher in the year 1808, propounded the atomic theories. And fundamental to the atomic theory of Dalton is that atoms are the smallest indivisible particle of an element that is capable of taking part in a chemical reaction. Capable of taking part in a chemical reaction. So for any material to react, that material must degenerate to atomic level. Atoms interact with one another in different ways depending on the differential degree of the electronegativity. We recall that when we look at the periodic table, we know that to the far left of the periodic table are the metals, and to the far right are the non-metals. When we talk of metal in the periodic table, we are talking of members of groups one and two, basically. But as we progress from group one to two to three and so on, we realize that electropositivity drops. And as electropositivity is dropping, electronegativity is uh, increasing. So it is on this ground that we say that atoms will only react or interact with one another depending on the differential degree of the participating atom's electronegativity value. So, looking at the nature of atom, as we have already said, the periodic table is divided into metals, non-metals, and the metalloids. We have chosen to use the blue, the red, and the cyan color to indicate metals to the far left non-metals to the far right and in between you have the metalloid as the electronegativity drops as the electronegativity value of a given atom drops gets lower the atom becomes more metallic but as you move from the left towards the right across the periodic table from left from group one towards group eight you realize that metallic property keeps decreasing 
as metallic property keeps decreasing, non-metallic property keeps increasing. In between, some metal, some element will show both metallic and non-metallic property. But for the purposes of this lecture, we will concentrate mostly, mostly on metals and non-metals. And when we talk about metals, we are talking about those elements that are electropositive in nature. Electropositive meaning that they have the ability of losing some or all of their valence electron to assume a positive charge from cation. And when we talk about electropositivity in an atom, we are referring to atoms of metals. And we say these are atoms of metals. They have one, two, or three valence electrons. That is to say, they have either one, two, or three electrons in their valence orbital. They form chemical bond by acquiring energy. They take in energy enough, the energy they take in, which is enough to give out an electron, is called ionization energy. The energy they take is to help them donate some or all of their valence electron. And when they donate some or all of their valence electron, they assume positive charge equal to the number of electrons they donate. So they will acquire ionization energy. And when they acquire ionization energy, they will give out electron. And when they give out electron, they will become positively charged, or you call it cation. Same applies to non-metals. Same applies to non-metals. When we talk of non-metals, we are looking at those atoms that contain between five, six, or seven electrons in their valence orbital. You will notice that we have carefully avoided four, the carbon group. One, two, or three metals, five, six, or seven valence electrons, non-metals. The non-metals form bonds form chemical bonds by giving out energy and the energy non-metals give out for them to be able to gain electron or electron the energy they give out is known as electron affinity and when a certain atom a certain electronegative atom a non-metal atom gives out enough energy that will allow an electron to settle in it, we say that that atom has become negatively charged because of the extra electron it has accepted. So it becomes an anion. It becomes negatively charged. In some other instance, non-metals can as well share some of their valence electron. They must not only accept electron from outside. They can also share some of their valence electrons to form covalent bond. To form covalent bond. So, such that each of the atom involved in the interaction will assume the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas. So the ultimate reason why atoms interact or react is for them to attain the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas. They do this either by losing, as in metal, or accepting, as in non-metals, or sharing to form covalent bond, as we have still in non-metals. This is what we are talking about. This is an electropositive atom. This is an electropositive atom. The black portion here is what accommodates both the nucleus of the atom and the inner orbitals. The inner orbitals. 
which usually do not take part in chemical reaction. The red or the outer circle, the red or the outer circle here is the portion that contains the valence electron. Here, this atom contains one valence electron, this atom contains two valence electrons, while this atom contains three valence electrons. The atom that contains one valence electron will acquire, you see, plus one ionization energy. When he acquires that, he will lose, that atom will lose one electron, minus one E here. And as he loses one electron, he assumes a positive charge of one. He assumes a positive charge of one. You see that this electron is no more here, in this part of the atom. And this atom is smaller in size. So when it loses the outer electron by acquiring ionization energy, he assumes a positive charge. He assumes a positive charge. And when he assumes a positive charge, the resultant cation is smaller in size compared. You see, it's smaller in size than the parent atom. Same applies here. He will acquire two ionization energies. Two ionization energies. And he will lose two electrons. The two outer electrons here and here will be lost. And when it is lost, he will assume a plus two state. A plus two state. As he assumes a plus two state, he becomes a two plus cation. And the two plus cation is smaller in size than the parent, than the parent atom. Than the parent, this is the parent atom. He is smaller because he assumes. And if you look carefully, you even see that the two plus atom is even more smaller than the one plus atom. Same applies to the atom with three electrons in the valence orbital, as you can see here. He will acquire three E, three ionization energy, as in this case. When he acquires three ionization energies, he shall give out three, the three valence electrons, and he shall assume a plus three state a plus three state that is what happens here when you talk about the electronegative atom or the non-metallic atom as in the case of having five six or seven look at it two three four five because it contains five he needs three electrons to complete octet because it won't contain six it needs two electrons to complete octet. Same applies here. So for this reason, the atom that contains three valence electrons will give out will give out three units of electron affinity. Recall that the energy that an atom gives out for him to be able to acquire electron is known as electron affinity. We call it EA here. He will give out, you see the negative sign here, he will give out three units of energy. And when he gives out three units of energy, as he gives out one, he takes the first green electron, give out another, he takes the next green electron, give out another, he takes the next green electron. And at that point, it becomes a minus three, a minus three anion. An, ion, an, an atom that has accepted three electrons and you see that two plus two plus two plus two becomes eight so for him to be able to attain the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas which is eight electrons in the valence orbital he shall give out three units of energy and acquire three electrons and you can see the three electrons the three green electrons same applies to that atom that has six the two here are paired. The two here are unpaired. So at that point, he will give out two units of energy. As he gives out two units of energy, he will acquire two, two, you can see the two green electrons. The two green electrons that has come to pair up here. It has come to pair up here. So at that point, he assumes 
a minus two state and a minus one state as well see it here and you have seen with me or you can see with me that the anion when an anion gives out elect gives out energy and accept electron he becomes bigger in size he becomes bigger in size than the parent atom furthermore we will look at the generalized bonding as it involves ionic bonding in ionic bonding you are you will see here that this atom with the green outer layer with showing green has one electron in the outside one electron outside one electron why this has two plus two plus two plus one as in the case of chlorine and sodium for instance here this atom that had one electron will acquire one unit of one unit of energy when he acquires one unit of energy he will give out the one electron he will give out the one electron and he when he gives out the one electron as you can see here the electron is no more there the arrow or arrow tells you that he has come to this level he doesn't have the one electron his red his uh, ion radius is smaller and the one only electron is accepted is accepted by this other atom and when this for this other atom to accept the one electron he shall need to give out electron one electron affinity accept one electron and he completes octet when a positive and a negative lies within the same area they are close to each other electrostatic force of attraction will ensue you agree with me that negative charges will attract while light charges at on light charges on light charges will attract while light charges will repel and because this is a positive charge and a negative charge there shall be polar interaction as induced by electrostatic force of attraction you can see the dotted line the attraction the dotted line covering dragging close and when that happens this bond there's a black bond formed here this bond will be formed this is what you call electrovalent or ionic bond electrovalent or ionic bond so at this point you can see the narrative here the narrative here the narrative here tells you what is happening here and the formation of the ionic bond yielding this crystal as you can see so as we move forward you also see the ionic and ionic bond energy the energy involved for a cation and the anion so formed to form an ionic bond two things happen the ion must be in a close proximity such that there shall be electrostatic force of attraction we shall induce enthalpy change there must be enthalpy change see there must be a change in energy remember we are already said when chemical reaction or chemical change occurs there will be change in energy and this is that change in energy and we call this enthalpy change and known as the heat of formation enthalpy change which you refer to as the heat of formation the positive sign here is indicative of the fact that the change can be positive or negative that's plus or minus plus or minus you can see in this schematic a and b are the reactant a and b are the reactant and a and b being the reactant forms an activated complex called ab the red component here showing ab a plus b equals to ab as it gives out this energy it comes to c c is the product of that reaction c is the product of the reaction you can see c here in green and for it to form 
it must give out enthalpy change or heat of a formation. If C is formed a little above the profile of A and B, we say that C is an endothermic reaction of A and B to yield C is an endothermic, endothermic, meaning that delta H will be negative here. It will be positive here. Endo, it has taken in heat. It has taken in heat and is formed at a higher profile. See the profile. Endo, taking it. So it will be positive, but here it will be negative because C is lower than A and B. Exo, it will give out heat. And when that is done, a crystal, a crystal, you can see green, red, red, green, green. This is a crystal structure of an ionic compound. A crystal structure of an ionic compound. What then are the properties of ionic compound? First, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in solid state because the ions are so firmly or tightly bonded, they don't seem to obey the law of thermodynamics. They don't seem to obey. It looks as if they are in a fixed position, even though that is not so. So for this reason, in solid state, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity. They exhibit high melting and boiling point as a result of their high electrostatic force of attraction bonding the ions together, and they are relatively hard in nature. Furthermore, furthermore, we see covalent bonding. Here you see this atom has five electrons in the valence orbital. And because it has five electrons in the valence orbital, it forms three covalent bonds. It shares, the black electrons are shared. You count one, two, three, six, plus two, eight. One, two, three, six, plus two, plus the two here, eight. Eight. That tells you that the two atoms here have formed a covalent bond and a triple bond, and they have attained the, the electronic configuration of a, a noble gas. The same applies here. They form two or a double bond, two or a double bond, while here they form a single bond, as you can see here. So they share this electron, these black electrons here are shared electrons, which add up to the two atoms to yield to yield octet. And we would have loved to discuss dative covalent bond, but already in our in our YouTube channel, Quanspec, we have already discussed that. So we encourage you visit our YouTube YouTube channel and Quanspec and view the formation of dative covalent bond. Also, in every of our posts, we give you the link to get the PDF format so that you can read. While watching the video, you can also read. We encourage you to subscribe. Please subscribe to Quanspec because we will be posting chemistry made simple for you to use in understanding chemical principles. Thank you, and we see you some other time.